absolute value functions is what we're going to be talking about today and specifically graphing those functions. So I'm going to turn that up just a little bit. So first of all, what is absolute value? You might remember from before, but absolute value um, is defined as a di how far a number is from zero on the number line. So it's the distance from zero on the number line. So since it is distance, it's typically positive. The absolute value of like negative three is three. Absolute value of three is three. Absolute value of zero is zero because zero is zero units away from um, zero on the number line. The absolute value function is a function that contains the absolute value symbols. The parent function for absolute value is y equals the absolute value of x. It's defined to be um, a piecewise function, technically. So it's equal to x when x is greater than 0, um, 0 when x equals 0, and negative x when x is less than 0. So there's the parent function, absolute value function. Our vertex in an absolute value function is similar to like the vertex you might be familiar with with the parabola. It's the minimum or the maximum um, point uh, on the function. So it's going to either be the minimum or the maximum value of the um, the range and of, of yeah the range I suppose. Domain are all the possible input values. Remember, domain typically goes with those x values. And because you can take an absolute value of any real number, um, your domain is all real numbers. So we say x is an element of the real numbers. So x is an element of the real numbers for domain. And then the range corresponds, corresponds to all the possible output values. And that changes um, depending on our specific function, but it does always correspond to the k value, which we'll talk, uh, talk about in one minute. So it corresponds to the k value. So we're going to look at some shifted absolute value function. So we're going to take that parent function and we're going to look at some key aspects. So uh, here is the general form. So we've taken the parent function and we've added a couple more letters to it, specifically h, k, and a. So the vertex is your h, k value. And then the a out front. The a out front um, well, I guess I'll more specifically say the H in the vertex is the um, horizontal shift. It shifts the function left and right. And K is the vertical shift. It shifts it up or down. And then the A out front. If you remember with parabolas, when A was negative, we'd say the parabola opens down. When A is positive, it opens up. A is going to be the same, same thing. So if A is um, positive, it opens up. If you have a negative A out front, it's going to open down. Opens down. It also um, acts as a vertical shrink or stretch. And more specifically, A is the slope of each of the branches. And you'll see when we start graphing it what I mean by that as well. So we've already defined domain to be all the set of input values. Those are going to be our x values for this particular function. And our range is going to be all the y values. Now the domain is always going to be all real numbers. So that means this is x is an element of the real numbers, or you can write it as all real numbers. And the range will be um, if it opens up, 
you're going to have all the values uh, greater than or equal to your vertical shifted value. That's when it opens up. Or the range will be all the y values less than or equal to that k value. That's when it opens down. So it kind of depends on what it looks like because those are all our output values. And I think it's easier to visualize that once you see a graph. So if our general equation is y equals a x minus h plus k, I'm going to identify my key features first. So I'm going to identify the h, k. So here is going to be 1 and then 2. So my h, k is going to be positive 1, 2. Notice that in my equation it was x minus 1, and then when I pull that out, my vertex is 1. For the h value, it always comes out as opposite as it is in that equation. So if it was x plus 1, your h value would be negative 1 because it's x minus h in the equation. So the vertex is going to be positive 1, 2. And then you can get your a value is out front. If there's nothing there, then that is an assumed coefficient of 1, an implied coefficient. So our a value is 1, which means that it has the same steepness or same vertical stretch as the parent function. So I'm going to graph this then with a, with a slope of 1 on the branches. So remember how the absolute value function was defined piecewise as, um, you know, x when x is greater than 0 and negative x when x is less than 0. So that's where I get my two slopes of my line. So first I'm going to start with my vertex. I'm going to graph it as one, over 1 up 2. And then a of 1, which means that it opens up with a slope of 1 over 1. So I'm going to do the first branch. I'm going to follow that positive um, side, the, the x side, when x is greater than 0, so to the right. And I'm going to go you know, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1 from my vertex, and then keep going from each point. And then I have the other side of it is the negative side. So then I have a slope of negative 1 over 1. So that's going to be up 1 to the left 1, up 1 to the left 1, up 1 to the left 1 to make that negative slope. So I have the positive sloping branch, and then I also have the negative sloping branch. And then that is the graph with a vertex of 1, 2 of this particular absolute value function. So domain is um, all the possible input values. Well, I can plug in any x that I want, subtract 1, take the absolute value of it, and then add 2. So that means that my domain is going to be all real numbers. So x is an element of the real numbers. Um, you could say that x is in the set from inf negative infinity to infinity, or you could just write out x is an element of the real numbers, all real numbers. So something that involves x and all real numbers there. For the range, I'm going to look at my output values. So if I look at my y-axis, the lowest y value I have is at um, y equals 2. Notice that corresponds to your k value. And then all of my output values are above that. Everything is up here. And so that means that my range are all y values that are greater than or equal to 2. 2 is included because I do have the vertex at 2 there. So that's the domain and range for that particular function. All right, let's try another one. So x negative 2, absolute value of x plus 2 minus 3. So to get my vertex, I'm going to take the hk values. Remember what I said about the h value? It's going to come out opposite. So the vertex will actually be negative 2, and the k value stays the same, negative 3. Because if you think about plugging that back into x minus h plus k, when you plug in a negative 2 in for h, it becomes positive 2 inside the equation. So that's why it comes out as opposite when you work backwards. So we have our h and our k, so that's our vertex. Our a value is out front, so this particular a value is negative 2, which means that it's going to open down and it is going to have a vertical stretch, which, make, which basically means that it's going to be more um, narrow because it has a um, increased slope. The, the branches are going to rise faster or slower. 
So let's graph that and see what it looks like. So negative 2, negative 3 is right there. And then you have um, one side at negative 2, or negative 2 over 1 is helpful when graphing a line. So you go down 2 to the right 1, down 2 to the right 1, down 2 to the right 1. Then reflect that over. You could think of this as like an axis of symmetry, and you can reflect it over. Or go down 2 to the left 1, and that makes the positive 2 slope. So down 2, left 1, two negative directions make a positive slope. And then it absolute value looks like a V when you're done. The domain, again, is going to be all real numbers. X is an element of the real numbers. You can plug in any X value into that function and get out a solution. And those solutions that you get out, the outputs are a range. And for this function, it's only going to give values for outputs that are less than or equal to negative 3. Okay, you can see that's our highest output value in this case. It's a maximum value because it, the graph opens down. So all of our values for output will either be at that value or below. All right, we're going to do one more together, and then I have three for you to try on your own. So the vertex, again, is going to be negative 3, negative 1. So the opposite inside the parentheses is the same on the outside. A value is going to be 1 third. This is going to be a vertical shrink. So if you think about it being kind of squished vertically, which means that it's going to look more uh, wide than the parent function. The domain, again, will be all real numbers. And since this one opens up, I know that all my y values are going to be greater than or equal to my vertex value for y, so my negative 1, my k value. So I can finish off that information. So I'll start by graphing negative 3, negative 1. And this time, a has uh, 1 third. So you have the 1 third positive. So up 1 to the right 3 leaves me at 0, 0. Up 1 to the right 3 to the right 3. But then you also have the other side of the absolute value as it's defined is the negative 1 third. So up 1 to the left 3, up 1 to the left 3. And then you can see how that has been vertical. It's a vertical shrink, which in essence makes this a really wide graph. So the smaller, when a is less than 1, but between 0 and 1, like a fraction, you're going to have that um, shrink where it's going to be much more wide when it's graphed. And then if a is greater than 1, you're going to have that, um, and that's the absolute value of a. So it doesn't matter if it's negative 4, it means it's going to open down, but it's going to be a vertical stretch and which means it's going to be really uh, narrow when it's graphed. So, and then remember if it's positive or negative, it just controls whether or not you open it up or down. Um, so to the right, you go down first. Okay, I have three problems for you to do on your own and then send this back to me in the assignment um, link and we will talk about it soon in class. All right, thanks guys.